So, <laughs> well, I'll let you tell them. <laughs> that, what does that say? Just got it. I don't like it. All right. Uh, okay. Take two. <laughs> <laughs> We've been trying to get on Facebook Live for what? 20 minutes, 20 minutes now. Yeah. So. Good morning, Facebook friends and family, and welcome to OSC Medical. My name is Bobby Ballesteros. Here at OSC Medical, we do orthotics, shoes, compression. We specialize in diabetes, arthritis, and other, other issues. Um, what we're really trying to do is cater to people that are healthy, want to maintain health, or, or people that just need some assistance. Um, today, we have a visitor, Sharon Friedman, from uh, Life Balance Therapies. I'm going to let Sharon kind of explain to you who she is and what she does. Oh, I'm going to take a deep breath here. <laughs> we were we did this, we started this at nine o'clock and didn't realize we were not live and so it took us a while to get here. So thank you for letting for coming if you were waiting, if you haven't you see this later. Uh, I hope you enjoy the information I'm about to give. I am Sharon Friedman. I am a massage therapist, a yoga teacher, and also a yoga therapist. And I got here here today by starting giving massages and in my, when I was wanting to become a massage therapist, we had to do uh, self-care. And I, everybody needs self-care, not just massage therapists. And through taking, uh, I did that by taking yoga and as I started taking yoga, I saw a real good, a real good connection between uh, information for my massage patients as, as much as for me. And when my massage patients, as our clients would actually do a pose that I suggested for them in between massages, I saw a huge uh, shift in being able to go deeper into the massage. I saw uh, improvement in their body uh, range of motion, everything, and I was really impressed. So I became a yoga teacher, and then through becoming a yoga teacher, I discovered a, uh, a deeper path called yoga, ther uh, yoga therapy, and I started down my path with uh, a, a lineage of uh, Krishnamacharya and Gary Kraftow and the American Indian Yoga Institute. And the one thing I learned about that, and that's why I want to get, you know, this is important because when I, I did a lot, I did a lot of um, yoga uh, trainings, but when I started training with Gary Kraftow and the yoga, I learned about breathing and how important breath is and how it changes, it changes you um, on a cellular level, and to, to you know to give you some information, go to the book Breathe by James Master, and you will you will you will find out how important breath is because I can't do it in this 15 20 minute segment. But what I am going to do is talk about how today this today is the beginning of the a six week kind of series, and we're going to start with breathing because um, everybody breathes. And not everybody breathes correctly, but when you breathe correctly, as you'll find out from reading the book, and, the, and if, you, if you try it, it shifts everything. And uh, a, a little story that I have is that over the past three, four years, as I was studying to become a yoga therapist, I had to work with different clients. And the first thing I would do, because of my lineage, I would have them work with breath. And they can probably, and you'll see how I work with them when I sit down with uh, Bobby. And Whatever the headache, backache, I don't know, whatever the, the problem they were coming to, they weren't too big of problems, so this is another thing. But I called a couple weeks later after working with their breath, uh, um, and, and they say, I, I don't need to come back, I feel really good. Whatever you do, the breathing is working. <laughs> and, and so, you know, we always want to we'll wait till the, the problem is too big, but a lot of problems can be solved by proper breathing. And it's really that simple. It, but it's, it, it's intense and it's, it, it's uh, amazing. So, breathing. Raise your hand and if you want to hashtag it, if anybody's out there. Uh, if you think about breathing all day long. Do you think about breathing all day long? No. Every time I think speak. Right, yeah. I mean, if we had to think about breathing all day long, we wouldn't get anything done because it, uh, it's a lot of work. But because we are blessed with this, into this, this machine, this body that has been programmed to breathe for us, it happens all the time until we get excited. You know, certain things happen, we get excited, we get scared, we pull our breath, whatever. Then we start thinking about breathing, but until then we don't think about it. And, and it, so what happens is what we're going to work with this morning is called structural breathing. So 
the way the brief, and this is really simple, okay? Reading is really complicated. But simply put that, in our, uh, something clicks in our brain that says, I need oxygen. So the brain sends a message down to the diaphragm. The diaphragm is usually at rest in a little bell. And it pushes, it flattens, the muscle, the diaphragm flattens and pulls the air into the lungs, through the nose, down the windpipe, into the lungs. And then depending on how healthy the lungs are, a lot of things about that, um, the musculature, everything, it, you know, how much we can be inhaled, how much we can be expanded. Then the brain gets a message that I've had enough breath. I, I, need, I, 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 I need to stop breathing. So the diaphragm stops. It starts to pull up and the air gets pushed up and out the nose. So the flow of breath it, it's structural breathing, or everyday breathing, is in and down, up and out. And this makes a really big, this is an important point when we start talking next week about breath and movement. But today we're just going to talk, we're just going to play with our breath. We're going to work with our breathing mechanism. So I would like you just to sit back in your chair, relax, close your eyes, and just watch yourself breathe. Now this is really hard because as soon as I tell you to watch yourself breathe, your little brain wants to get into the action and wants to tell you how to breathe. So see if you can get that little brain to stop telling you and see if you can get the mind to watch. Because you know there's two different things. The, the brain has an action and a um, observation. So see if you can get the observatory part of your brain and watch yourself inhale and feel yourself inhale. Watch yourself exhale, feel yourself exhale. And notice where you're breathing. Are you breathing chest and no belly? No chest movement, only belly? Are the shoulders coming up and down? Um, maybe there's no movement whatsoever, but you're still breathing. So there's a, there's a lot of musculature that goes on with breathing, and we're going to activate those muscles, that uh, the deep muscles of your breathing, because the muscles that you use to breathe are part of your deeper, deeper. They're attached to the skeleton of your body. They're not out here, not your shoulders. Not like your abdom abdominals have a little bit to do with it, but it's more about the inner body. And I usually have pictures and, and all kinds of stuff that when I'm teaching this that people can see because you can't see inside your body. So we're going to shift right now. I'm going to throw the mat down on the floor. So if you are, you know, people at home watching, you can lay on the floor, or if you don't get on the floor, people cannot get on the floor. And, um, or can't get off the, up off the floor once you get on, so you don't want to get on the floor. Come on down and uh, sit back in your chair and just and, and, uh, do the same thing. So the body's going to come lay down. I'm going to take my chin back. He's going to lay on his back, stretch out. And <laughs> I'm going to do something for Bobby's head. He's, a li he's got a little bit of a chin up, and you wanna, don't want to. Um, have restriction in your, your uh, windpipe. Come on down. You want to keep your head. So can you feel that your head, your chin is now down a little bit, and your, and your windpipe is now elongated? It's not up like that. That's really important. So you know, people who are head thrusters or head this way, that really puts a lot of strain on the windpipe and the uh, beginning of the breathing. So you want to work on getting your head where your ears are over your shoulders, which that's another thing altogether. Never let you. <laughs> so I'm going to have Bobby just breathe. Okay, so you're laying on the floor. You're just going to close your eyes and let your body breathe. Don't try to, breath is the one thing that is an automatic all the time, but we can take it out of automatic and put it into manual. Right now we want to keep it in automatic. We want the, inhale, the brain to say, Pull the, uh, the diaphragm down, pull the air in, and just feel that happening. Feel when it stops, feel when you're naturally, but it comes to a stop. And then feel how, as the diaphragm starts to retract back up into its little bell curve. And how, you know, is the belly lifting and rising? And I've already worked with Bobby last week, so he is, he's, he's a little bit of a ringer. <laughs> he didn't do I've been coached. Yeah, he's been coached last week. This was not moving whatsoever, and this was just going. Boo, 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 boo. <laughs> this would inspire me to breathe right here because yeah, a simple so, thing like breathing could be such a huge thing. So. Yeah, and I can even tell you from last week, his coloring, his face, his body, uh, holding his body, 
was totally different than today. It, the boy has changed. So I'm going to have Bobby place his hand like so, like a chicken, kind of like a chicken with wings, and have his fingers be on the rib cage on the side, okay? And if you have tight shoulders, it may be hard to do. That's why being on the floor is kind of nice. You can even like put the block up on your, uh, or something on your elbows to lift your shoulders up. So what I'm going to have him do is, and I'm going to have everybody really like to try this, is imagine you've got this beautiful flower under your nose, the most fragrant flower and the fragrance you love. And if you take a big, whopping uh, breath in your nose, you're going to get petals and, and pollen and the piston up your nose and everything up your nose and your back in your head. And I, what I want you to do is slowly, gently, just inhale the fragrance through your nose just a little bit, just enough to let the chest expand. You want the chest to expand out this way. Okay? You want to go outward, not upward. You want to go outward. You don't want to go this way. You want to go this way. To, and this is really hard because most people just breathe. So we're working on the muscles that open the chest, open the rib cage. You're also going to feel a lifting up of the whole rib cage. You feel that? So like hot air balloon, it's going to expand and lift away from the pelvis. And then hold that for a second. And it's like a little air balloon. Let the air out. Like a little hole in the balloon that you nose, let the air out really slowly until the, the rib cage come back to normal and the, rib, the whole rib cage come back down. And I want you to do this breath for like three or four times, really trying to just stop right there. That's too much. We like to breathe deep and then release. So only with the chest, ex the chest rising and lifting. Try not to get the belly action in there. We're going to get there. And notice as you inhale and the chest expands and rises, the belly starts to lengthen. Not rise, really, it lengthens. Okay, so, and then put your hands down and relax and push into the belly if you want. And just breathe. And notice if you feel a shift in the way that you're breathing. You feel that? Automatically, our brain is very neuroplastic. And we can change habits. So breathing is a habit. Comes to this goal bad habits, good habits, whatever. And so we're changing the, the way that we're, our breath works. If, if you might have been breathing this way, so you're not going to feel differently. And we're going to expand that a little bit more. We're going to go ahead and put our, our um, hands on our, on one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. And you're going to do that little bit of inhale, feeling the chest rise and open. You're going to stop. And you're going to sit a little more and see if you can then Lengthen from uh, from your the bottom of your rib cage down to your belly button as you inhale a little bit more. Stop, and then lengthen from your belly button down to the pelvic floor a little bit more, and stop, and then again let yourself deflate just like a little balloon. Let it go out really, 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 really slowly. And we'll do that two more times. So ex inhale and exhale. Let it go. And exhale a little bit. And now inhale gently just to expand the chest, stop. Inhale a little bit more down to the, no, exhale. <laughs> the belly, stop, hold it. And then inhale a little bit more. So the sip, it's little sips so you're gonna be out of breath and not able to do it. And then exhale and slowly let it go. So remember, the sip is just a, like a sip, not a, not a draw, but a sip. So inhale and exhale, let it go. And you're going to once again inhale and let the chest rise and expand. Stop. And then keep lengthening down to the belly button. Stop. And lengthen down one more. Stop. And now slowly exhale. And let your arms go down and just relax and let go back to that automatic. Don't try to go back to let your body just breathe in. Notice a shift in your breath and the body. Even, even more notice the, the shift in the um, energetic of your body. It feels more relaxed. The body feels more, the body feels more focused and calm. Yes. This is just the inhale. Wait till you get the exhale. <laughs> so the exhale is even more, in, it's more work. You think about exhale like we're just relaxing, but exhale, remember the diaphragm is being lifted and pulled up. So are all the muscles of our body being lifted and pulled up. So we want to Utilize the muscles of the, the, of the spine 
to slow down the uh, width of the diaphragm. So how we're going to do this, don't do it yet, just we're going to inhale in and down, and then we're going to hold it for a second, and we're going to like zip, like, like a corset, pull everything in, and zip up to the diaphragm. Like we're like you get tight pants, you pull in and lift up. Everybody do that. Imagine you've got tight pants and you're trying to get your tight pants on, and you pull in your di your belly button, and you lift up to the top of the uh, uh, this case. You feel that? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to exhale. So we're going to do it really slowly. So go ahead and inhale in and down. Just take up one big inhale down to your pelvic floor. Now hold it as you exhale. Let a little bit out through your nose and pull up from the pelvic floor to the belly button, like we're zipping up. Hold that for a second. And then pull in and zip up a little bit more from the belly button up to the bottom of the diaphragm. Keep that zip up and relax your, relax your rib cage. But don't lose the zip up. And as you inhale, you're going to expand your chest. Release this a little bit as you inhale a little bit more and release this a little bit more. And then as you exhale, you're going to Pull in and lift up from the pelvic floor, bringing that up to the belly button. Stop, exhale a little more through your nose from the belly button up to the diaphragm. Hold that, engage that abdominal corset and release the shoulders and relax the rib cage. But don't lose the abdominal engagement. We're going to do it one more time. So inhale and exhale and slow down. And now you're going to inhale in and down. Pause, hold that for a second so you can then engage and lift and pull in your belly button, your pelvic floor into the belly button. As you exhale a little bit, hold that for a second and then continue up from the belly button, pulling in and up like a corset to the rib cage and then keep that corset held as you relax the rib cage. And then inhale and exhale like that. So, does everybody, anybody feel like they're breathing a little bit deeper? Not in, the, in, a, in like but deeper in the internal part of your body. You can feel the musculature of the uh, structural breathing mechanism actually working. And your brain and your muscular uh, are, uh, connection is really strong. Feel that, Bobby? And you really feel it, you know you're breathing. And the more you practice this, the more as you go through life and you're automatically breathing, this is the kind of breathing that's gonna be happening because you're, you're working with the neuromuscular um, of the body and, and mind, and there's a communication between them. And you're no longer, no longer is hap haphazard. It's, it's very, um, I can't get a word. Um, you're doing it with, with intention, very intentional, with intention. You're breathing intentionally, even if you're not thinking about it, because you've already put it up in your brain that that's what you want. So come sit up, bend your knees, roll over, come up. Come to come to a sitting position for anybody who can um <laughs> like on the floor and just sit up nice and tall and notice notice the the um, engagement of the spinal muscles lifting I call I call this the uh, the, uh, the um, effort of the effortless effort of sitting up nice and tall. They feel effortless. Also, our breathing mechanism is very connected to our spine, and when our, our breathing mechanism is correct, then our, our spine will get stronger. I love it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can go on forever. So next week, we're going to work on breath and movement, which is even more spine connected, and I, I look forward to doing that. So I don't know if there's any questions. You can always put questions in the box, and I will be glad to contact you and answer any questions you have. In. Um, my question is, um, how does this help the people that are recovering from like the shoulder surgery? Oh, okay. Shoulder injury. Okay, well this goes into next week, but I'm gonna use Bobby. So Bobby says he has a shoulder injury here. Okay, so when we inhale and we raise our arms, remember the lifting up and the opening of the rib cage facilitates that movement. And when we exhale, it facilitates the movement bringing down. So I asked him before, don't breathe and raise your arms. And does it feel stretchy? Does it feel like it's pulling? It hurts. It hurts. But when you inhale and raise the arm, there's no pain, is there? Because the movement facilitates, breath facilitates the movement. So we'll talk again, we'll talk about, and, and so also remember, 
that in the rotator cuff, the serratus and the teres minor and the pec, and I, right now I can't think of this muscle right here, they're all connected to the shoulder, but they're all, have, they're all um, moved by the breath, by the lifting of the rib cage and expanding of the rib cage. So when, we, when that doesn't happen, uh, muscles that are not being you know, stretch, you know, lengthened by that musculature is going to pull on muscles that are connected to bone, and that's going to tear muscle away from bone, and so it's helping raise the arm up. It's just going to pull the arm up and let it pull. Anyway, I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. I, I, I love the compassion you have for what you do. Um, the other thing is, uh, how does this, how does this benefit or work with athletes? Um, I, I, Again, um, there have been studies and studies and studies and studies now about um, breathing through your nose as an athlete, that it's much it's much more efficient, especially in the book about breathing, the spot breathe by James Nasser. Is, but there are studies about that. And um, it, breathing efficiently is, helps an athlete be, to have much better um, recovery rates and um, uh, less injury. I mean, it, it, when you're running, what keeps you oxygenated? Your breathing mechanism. But on the other hand, um, you need. Uh, there's been studies about using, utilizing carbon dioxide uh, as for runners, and they, they run even better when they have have less oxygen and more carbon dioxide in there. And so it it, it is a huge huge uh, um, subject, but. Uh, yeah, just you know, good old uh, breathing in increases athletic ability. And you'll you'll get a bunch of points about that. And I, I think the the neatest thing about this is I never I never took into consideration you know what breathing does. I mean I I deal with diabetes, arthritis, and circulatory issues, swelling, lymphedema, all these things. And a lot of times what we're trying to promote is trying to promote circulation. There's oxygen. <laughs> but there's, there's all these things that kind of are, are involved and you know I think the, the breathing part was something that I never really looked at but then when I talked to you you were like hey let's take a look at this and and I realized I was like hold on I did not know that I wasn't doing something that I'm actually trying to promote which is the healing part yeah the healing part of the body and how how the body heals and what what assists the body and it gets to where it needs to be comfortably and healthy you know so that was where I was like, well, yeah, I think, I think we need to do something together. And so I've taken it upon myself to get with health professionals that can help me understand more of what I'm trying to achieve, but also, you know, work with you and work with myself and really get the word out on what, what you can do that's simple, simple things like breathing and the other things we're going to gonna cover later on the other five segments. And I think there's going to be a huge learning curve for a lot of people on, on what you're about to teach them. So. Well, if, if you do come back next week and talk about breath and movement. Um, I, did, I really went through the breathing mechanism really fast, okay, I, because you know, we had so much time. But you can go back and you know revisit and go over that breathing that we did over and over and over again to get that feeling of, and if you're interested, I would love to work with you uh, or at least help you um, with your breathing. So, but if you watch that little little part and do that over and over and over again. <coughs> Excuse me. When we come back next week, you're going to be, uh, and I just a little bit of a preview, so we're going to be doing things like inhaling up and exhaling down and using our breath to facilitate that movement. And I'll talk more about and deeply more about that next week. So if you plan to come back, I, I encourage you to work with your breathing so that the it'll be more feel more natural, feel more comfortable. But I also want you to notice that you're um, sitting up tall, shoulders down, a lot of stuff. Notice the shifts and changes in not only too emotionally, how the breathing, hopefully if you're doing it correctly, really can enhance and relax. And this other thing about inflammation uh, illness. Um, we all know stress is one of the deepest, the, the, you know, is one of the biggest culprits of, of illness. And when we start breathing correctly, we lower the stress of our internal body and our brain. Uh, and then a lot of things start to happen that are kind of, you know, magical. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you uh, try.
try it, and I hope you do something. I, like I honestly, this is um, a lot. Of, a lot of people go on. They 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 do yoga. They do, they go to classes to learn this, and I thought this was a good opportunity to kind of share yoga with people that you can actually do this. To, you know the comfort of your own home mm-hmm. and really try the videos here so if you go through the video and you're going wow I want to I want to I want to check this out again go back to the video again go back to it over again some of the best things that ever happened in life was done through consistency which means you know yes I did it once and I felt good but a lot of times people kind of forget these little things and I forgot it and so now I've got a video that I can go to and go hey <laughs> let's go back and you know reference information is always good to have to just remind us of those little things that we forget. You know, so this, this, this is great. So I implore everybody to give it a shot, try it, let me know what you think. Feel free to leave some comments, feel free to ask questions. Uh, they're also welcome to come and visit myself or Sharon and talk to us in person. Set up some time and to get to know what else we can do for you. So thank you everybody. Thank you, Bobby. I really thank appreciate you. that. It's truly a pleasure. It's truly a pleasure. Thank you guys. You have a wonderful day.